I mean, it's a very, very big point you're making there that India will be the next China, that the demographic... With more people. More people, but, and it's higher, higher of potential GDP per capita. So what does this mean for this idea of China being a dominant player in the new world order, as so many are suggesting it will be and has already become? It, you're it's, saying all, it's already seen it. You've already seen the best of China because they cheated and overdid it. It could have been a few, another decade or so, but they already overbuilt for the future. So China will never be the growth engine it was in the last 30, 40 years. And, it, and that will come from Southeast Asia and India. And India, after I'm dead and you're dead, after me, China will be the largest economy. One day, around the 2050s or 60s, India will be the largest economy in the world. And the U.S. will still probably be a little bigger than China. So you're saying that China is going to lose almost half of its population by what, 2100? The year yeah, 2100? I think about, about a third or something. It's going to go, yeah, 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 from 1.4 down to about, let's say, 0. 0.8. So yeah, they're going to lose about about 40% of the population. I mean, that that's never happened before. Michelle. This when Is, is that a, a, a one-child policy secret, consequence? Another secret I mean, the more fluent people get, in fact, the less children they have. OK, so that started in the developed countries. China and Japan were the first Asian countries to accelerate, especially Japan first and South Korea. And as soon as they got rich, they just stopped having kids. The, the, the birth rate is 1.3 in China, 1.2 in Japan. 2.2 is, is to just keep your population at the same level. These countries are Japan is collapsing with four eyes, has been for a couple of decades. China is going to collapse just as fast over a longer period of time. This has never happened in history that we've gotten so affluent that we stop having kids and you can't grow down the road. Well, I mean, China also kids. had the, the one child policy enacted for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, and you know what? So, they took it away, Michelle. Yeah, they, they, they did. lifted that. You know how many babies they had in response to that? Less. Yeah. Um, Once you've had only one kid, you realize, oh man, this is a good deal. Two or three are just two to three times more expensive. So it's hard to get somebody that's done that. The, the, the lifting the, the child restriction in China did no good whatsoever. Why? Because they've gotten more fluent and they're getting and they're aging. They're the fastest aging, large cut emerging country in the world. And aging leads to slower growth. So, so aging means more and more older people. More and more older people means less birth. So it's a reinforcing cycle that gets worse and worse. And again, never happen globally in history on any large scale the countries got so affluent that they aged rapidly and then declined because of aging right all right but you say it's not in your lifetime it's not in my lifetime let's focus on our current lifetimes and what we can do and i want to bring the conversation back to what investors can do because usually in times of crisis and rising inflation we typically see gold as a safe haven. Now, we have seen gold rally a little this year. It's broken 1900 recently. But you write in your recent newsletter, it's a very colorful quote, that gold will go running to mommy with everything else before this crash is over. And unlike commodities that have already crashed, this is going to be more dramatic for gold likely into late 2023 or later. So gold is going to be running to mommy and gold has more downside than most commodities that have already crashed a lot. Yeah, only because commodities have already largely crashed and gold is held up. Now this is, what I'm saying is exactly what happened in the 2007-8 crisis, okay? When stocks peaked in October 2007 and started to go down, 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 gold held up and actually drifted up. Gold was seeing itself Okay, we'll be the safe haven when things go down. We're going in a recession. Well, gold then crashed in the second half of 2008. Gold followed commodities and stocks down and crashed 45% in just a matter of three or four months. So gold was the la held up the longest, just like now. It, it, it's flat to up, but it, it went down not as much. It still didn't go down as much as other commodities, still didn't go down as much as stocks. OK, but gold end up crashing and crashed rapidly. So gold is not the safe haven. I'll tell you what the safe haven is. Anybody looks at it, it was 100 percent crystal clear. 
the highest quality long-term bonds in the world, U.S. Treasury bond. 30-year Treasury bonds would have been the best thing to hold in the 2008 crash. They would, the, 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 the TLT, which is an average of 10 and 30, went up 45% precisely when stocks and gold and everything crashed together in the second half of 2008. The 30-year would have gone up more than that. I'm predicting that the bonds recently will double. The, the, the uh, TLT could double from its recent bottom at 92 um, in, in going to 186 in the next year or two. The safest bonds in the world are actually what appreciate the most when a financial asset bubble goes down and all other financial assets go down, leaving the safe haven. And again, same thing. Gold might be the last one to go down, but it'll go down in the end, just like it did before. I'm predicting gold goes down to 900 to 1,000. That will be a lot less than commodities again, but that's still a big, that's still a 40, 40, 45% fall from here. So anybody thinks gold's going to protect you here, good luck. So Treasury gold... Bond. Gold going to 900 or 1,000 again by this late 2024, July 2024. Yeah, and it, it, it'll tend to bottom earlier. Yeah, it, it may bottom with or earlier than stocks, but yeah. But, 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 but big picture, beyond 2024, assuming gold does follow this pattern, what are your thoughts more long-term on gold? Because we're seeing record central bank purchases of gold. We've got the BRICS, the BRICS uh, saying that they're exploring the possibility of a new a currency potentially uh, pegged to gold, as well as a basket of other commodities. Russia and Iran are reportedly working together to launch some kind of stable coin pegged to gold, backed by gold to a degree that could replace the U.S. dollar for payments in international trade. The signs are pointing towards de-dollarization, given how the dollar has been weaponized around the world. And the other signs are pointing for gold to come back and take its spot as a reserve currency, as a peg to a new form of reserve currency. What's your thoughts on that? Okay, that, that is not what I see. I see gold turning around and doing, I think gold could go to three to 4,000 and next boom. You know my number one reason? Yeah, I, I, and I have traveled, especially to India, it's the second country I've traveled to the most outside of Australia. The people who love gold the most in the world, Chinese, but mo but Indians even more. If India is the next big thing, gold is going to boom because Indians buy and use gold both, both for security and jewelry and everything else. Okay, Indians are poor and the best way to show a little wealth is wear gold wherever you can. And they wear gold in places we wouldn't even think of. Okay, so gold for fundamental reasons will do well and go up in that next boom. Okay. But the safe haven, I think what will be become the whole purpose of, of, of the crypto, okay, in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the, is, is, is the, has the potential, from my view, and it's got to be much more valuable than that, um, to become the digital gold. And they, they call it that. A lot of people call it the digital gold. Bitcoin would have to be a half a million or more, but at that point, it starts to be worth more than all the gold in the world, and it's more expandable than gold. The problem with gold is gold supply is running at about 1% and falling a year, and the world economy is growing at 5 to 6% typically. So gold was a good standard for money in the past. It doesn't fit a digital world, and it doesn't fit a faster and larger growing global world. So I see crypto Bitcoin slowly over the next couple of decades becoming that digital gold, and gold growing for, for better reasons, fundamental demand by emerging countries who are, they may never get as rich as us and they will not. I can project any country, okay? India might get up to 24,000 GDP per capita, still a, a third of the US, but that is, that is three, four times what they are now. It's a huge boom. Those people will be driving the demand for all types of commodities, but particularly gold. So I would, I would, be a buyer of gold, and it's a great diversifier in a portfolio, just not when it's going down. I I I would buy gold myself a few years from now if it got down that nine hundred thousand range, looking for it to go to three to five thousand. But but I still say the best stocks and stock markets will do better than that. 